This is part two of module two, Azure Active Directory and Microsoft Intune Fundamentals. In this part, we're gonna cover Microsoft Intune and Intune for Education. As we discussed previously, Microsoft Intune is a service provided by Microsoft Endpoint Manager. Specifically, is a cloud service that allows us to manage our devices. Microsoft Intune offers two different management approaches. One is called Mobile Device Management, or MDM, and the other one is called Mobile Application Management, or MAM. Both approaches are cross-platform, meaning that with the Microsoft Intune, we can manage either Windows, macOS, iOS, iPadOS, and the Android platforms. With the Mobile Device Management, we enroll devices into the service, and once they are enrolled, then we can provision settings and applications. We have a high degree of control of these devices. So for example, on a student device, we can push settings such as the wallpaper, or maybe the preferred browser, or maybe favorites for them. On these devices, we can push also applications so that students don't have to install applications on their own. For an example, we can push a Microsoft 365 apps with the Teams, a OneNote, or maybe Minecraft Education Edition. Mobile device management offers also reporting device inventory, so we can have a list of devices with the hardware details. We can measure device compliance based on compliance policy that we define in the service. And as needed, we can also remove corporate data or school data from these devices. That may be a case where a device is stolen or lost. While mobile device management is more common to be seen for corporate or school-owned devices, mobile application management is more commonly seen with the Bring Your Own Devices, or BYOD. With mobile application management, it's all about managing the applications and their behaviors. We can secure applications and their content. As an example, we could configure the Outlook mobile application to prevent users to send emails outside of our organization. In this course, we're gonna focus on mobile device management. It's now time to introduce Intune for Education. We already discussed about Microsoft Intune, which is our cloud solution for managing cross-platform devices. But then we had to think about how to make the management experience better for classroom-specific scenarios. So we came up with Intune for Education. Intune for Education is still a cloud-based console, but takes some of the most important management use cases in Intune and makes them more easily discoverable, quicker to configure, and really simpler to navigate compared to Intune. The idea behind Intune for Education is that management of school devices should not be a task just for IT pros, but by providing an easy to use and intuitive interface, anybody can manage school devices in no time. As an example, we have Express Configuration, which is a wizard-driven solution to easily configure our school devices. One thing that we should note is that Intune for Education portal is designed to include only the settings and different workflows to manage iPad and Windows platforms, because those are the platforms most commonly used in education. If we look at Intune for Education, there are different applications and policies pre-configured for you, so that you can get started very quickly. Under a device enrollment perspective, we have the integration with the Setup School PCs, and with the Windows Autopilot, so that we can easily provision brand new devices. We will discuss device enrollment in Module 6. Lastly, Intune for Education provides uh, ease access to bulk operations, for example, uh, reset or wipe operations. For instance, uh, it's at the end of the school year and we need to reset uh, carts of devices. We can easily do so from Intune for Education by performing bulk operations across the different devices. With Intune for Education, we can manage our devices from the enrollment phase all the way to the retirement phase. 
With the enrollment, we can bulk enroll devices or sell servicing or maybe using Windows Autopilot. Through the provisioning phase, we need to deploy settings and applications. And then the management phase is where really we need to maintain our devices, reporting and monitoring them, and eventually performing remote tasks. At the end of the life cycle of our devices, we may need to retire, or maybe at the end of a term or a semester, we may just need to factory reset them. So the question here may be, which tool should we use? Earlier, I introduced the Microsoft 365 Admin Center as the hub to access these different administrative consoles. From there, you can access Microsoft Endpoint Manager or Intune for Education. Intune for Education is really the optimal choice, especially if you're starting your journey with Intune. In case you need to create more sophisticated configurations or configure other platforms, for example, Android or Mac OS, you can always switch to the Microsoft Endpoint Manager console. Lastly, remember that Intune for Education and Microsoft Endpoint Manager are just two different consoles, and regardless of which one you choose, you're still configuring the Intune service. They're not mutually exclusive, so you may find some tasks being easy to carry out using Intune for Education and for more sophisticated tasks using Microsoft Endpoint Manager. Let's now jump in our second demo, where we're going to prepare the environment for mobile device management. We will be configuring some settings in Azure Active Directory and some settings in Microsoft Endpoint Manager, so that the devices can be easily enrolled by our end users. And then we will look both at Microsoft Endpoint Manager console and the Intune for Education console. And uh, we are back in the Microsoft 365 Admin Center. From here, let's open Azure Active Directory to configure branding. Azure Active Directory branding, as I mentioned before, is very useful for our end users so that anytime they authenticate uh, against Azure Active Directory, they see a familiar interface, maybe with the school logo or the school colors. Also, Azure Active Directory branding is a prerequisite in case you want to use uh, Windows Autopilot. So from here, let's select Azure Active Directory and let's select the company branding. We select configure and then we fill out this form where we can specify for the default language, a signing background image, a banner logo, maybe by specifying username hint and signing page text. Once we have this form completed, we can also enable the option for keep me signed in and let's select save. To demonstrate the results of Azure Active Directory branding, let's open a private window and see how our end users are greeted when trying to authenticate to our tenant. From here, let's try to browse to portal.office.com. And let's provide a user account that has been created in our tenant. Now you can see the effort of configuring Azure Active Directory branding. As a student, I can see the logo of my school. I am greeted with the welcome message and I can type my password now. Since we enabled the keep me signed in option, the end user is also asked if we want to enable the stay signed in functionality. And now I can start to use Office Online. There is one more thing that we need to configure in Azure Active Directory to prepare the environment for mobile device management. With that, let's hover over Devices and select Device Settings.
Here, we want to make sure that we have selected user may join devices to Azure Active Directory configured to all. This is required if we want to enable bulk enrollment using provisioning packages for Windows devices. We will dig deeper into those details in a later demo. Now let's head back to the Microsoft 365 Admin Center and let's take a closer look at Microsoft Endpoint Manager and doing some basic configurations. This is a Microsoft Endpoint Manager Admin Center. Like any other Microsoft 365 consoles, we have a navigation pane on the left-hand side, which we can minimize or expand. And then we have links to the different functionalities offered by Microsoft Endpoint Manager. For the time being, let's go under Devices, Windows, and let's select Windows Enrollment. First, let's verify the configuration of Automatic Enrollment. Automatic MDM Enrollment is a capability for Windows 10 devices to automatically enroll in Intune after an Azure AD join or an Azure AD registration process. Here, we want to ensure that the MDM user scope is set to all. We can further customize the type of devices allowed to being managed by Intune using enrollment restrictions, but we will cover those in Module 6. Next, we want to verify that Windows Allow for Business is disabled at the tenant level. The reason is that if we don't ensure that Windows Allow for Business is disabled by default, all devices, as soon as they are joined to Azure Active Directory and managed by Intune, they will prompt our end users to register in Windows Allow for Business. So that may not be the desired case for student devices, where students may not have been registered for multi-factor authentication. So let's just verify that Windows Allow for Business is disabled. Remember, we can always enable Windows Allow for Business on specific devices by configuring them with a separate policy. To verify that Windows Allow for Business is disabled at the tenant level, ensure that this configuration is set to disabled. In my case, there are no changes required. We will spend more time in Microsoft Endpoint Manager Admin Center during the course of this workshop. Now let's hover back again to the Microsoft 365 Admin Center. If we select all admin centers, we have a link to Intune for Education. Let's select that link. And this opens a new tab to the Intune for Education portal. If you want to access directly this portal, you can browse to intuneeducation.portal.azure.com. Like Microsoft Endpoint Manager, we have a left navigation pane where we have links to the different functionalities provided by Intune for Education. We can minimize and expand this panel. And then we have the central panel where there are details about the component that I select on the left-hand side. As you can see, this console appears very user-friendly with these uh, big elements in the central panel. And uh, if we select uh, these elements in this example, Express Configuration is a wizard-driven based scenario that it can be used to configure the devices. We will explore all of these options in future demos. One thing I want to call out real quick here is that if we select groups, then we have visibility of all the groups that have been configured in this specific Azure Active Directory tenant. And one benefit of using Intune for Education is that the groups are exposed in a hierarchical view. For example, if I expand the I4E Elementary School and there are groups nested in this parent group, then they're exposed in here. This concludes our demo, so let's head back to our presentation. 
So to recap, in this module we cover many different topics. We started by providing an overview of Azure Active Directory and Microsoft Endpoint Manager, and then we looked into Intune and Intune for Education. Through the demos, uh, we demonstrated how to create a brand new tenant with an Intune subscription, and then we configured some basic settings to prepare the tenant for mobile device management. We also reviewed different tools that we can use to manage these platforms. We looked at the Microsoft 365 Admin Center, the Azure AD Admin Center, and the Endpoint Manager Admin Center. Then we reviewed Microsoft Intune for Education. In this slide, I provide additional information. There are some links to trial subscriptions in case you want to start with Intune for Education, Office 365, or Microsoft 365 trials. Then I added the links to the different admin centers that we covered during the demos. Lastly, I point out to School Data Sync, which I mentioned during one of the demos. And School Data Sync can be used to pull data from your student information system to Microsoft 365. If you follow the link, there is a description of School Data Sync, and you can also engage with the onboarding team who can help you onboarding with the School Data Sync. This uh, concludes uh, module two. In the next module, we will be covering uh, the setup of Intune for Education.